You may know magnolias for their showy, large, pink or white flowers. But did you know, in the fossil record, they are shown to be over 40 million years old? Let's dig deeper. Hello, I'm Charles Shi. I'm a botanical horticulturist at Kew Gardens. I work in the Arboretum. Previously, I worked as part of the team who looked after the Rhododendron Dell um, and the Azalea Garden. And this included magnolias, camellias and rhododendrons. I love magnolias because they bring out a sense of colour during a time when things are so bleak. It's particularly prominent um, at a time when there are no leaves on trees. So particularly on the deciduous magnolias, seeing lots of clusters and dots of colour all around, it just brings such excitement. Magnolias evolved in a time when the dinosaurs were still alive in the Cretaceous period, around 100 million years ago, so it says in the fossil record. This was a time when there were no bees around. So what would pollinate these flowers? Well, beetles. It's got really rigid petals to withstand the weight of the beetles and their mandibles, which they are, are, are quite strong, which could potentially chew through weaker and thinner flowers. What the flower does is it attracts a beetle in the daytime, beetles will fly in, and as night comes, uh, the flowers will close and the female reproductive organs will open, uh, allowing the, the beetle to pollinate the, the, the stigma with any pollen that's attached to its body. And as the night progresses, the female parts will close and then the male parts will open as the plant senses it's getting brighter. So it deposits pollen onto this beetle. And then the flower will open to allow the beetle to escape and to propagate and proliferate the DNA of this magnolia to other magnolias. So in front of us here, we have two different types of magnolias. One, which is a tree forming magnolia, and another one, which is an understory forming magnolia. The tree forming one, Magnolia crossulangiana, is such a stunner. It fills the canopy tops of forests in East Asia. This is Magnolia cross Liebneri, a understory forming magnolia. It's got, as you can see here, it's got a lot more tepals than Magnolia uh, cross Sulangiana, and it's so iridescent and white here. So we can really see the difference in forms between these two magnolias. The genus Magnolia is named after an influential French botanist, Pierre Magnol. Pierre Magnol was a botanist uh, whom in the 1600s grouped together plants of similar characteristics, leading to some of our modern taxonomic groupings. And because of this breakthrough, Magnol's friend, Charles Plumier, in the early 1700s, decided to designate this beautiful genus, Magnolia, to him. Magnolias originated in East and Southeast Asia. And as the, the Himalayas started forming in the tertiary period, they really diversified to fill different types of ecological niches. A bit of time after, they also moved over to North and Central America via the land bridge between Russia and North America. I wanted to tell you about this magnolia, Magnolia cross Liebneri Leonard Messel. This is a understory forming magnolia, one that's quite a lot smaller than some of the bigger ones that most people come to know. And it's beautiful in, in that it has these really dainty dainty flowers with lots of tepals. And what's characteristic about these understory magnolias is that they branch a lot from their base. So this one's got a bit of a rounded shape, um, but you can see how the branching comes from the base and it almost forms a bit of a thicket. Uh, another feature of magnolias is their smooth bark, particular when, particularly when they're young. 
and some of the old magnolias will develop a bit of a rougher bark. But the younger ones tend to be smooth, tend to be quite matte shiny and a bit of a grey blue colour. Here we have Magnolia crossulangiana, a tree forming magnolia. It's a magnificent specimen but it really typifies some of the features of the magnolia genus. For example, it spreads quite readily at its base, so it's quite what we term shrubby. It's got grey smooth bark, but what's most characteristic about this genus, bar a few species, are that the flowers are terminal, in that they form at the ends of the branches. Caring for magnolias are pretty straightforward. They're relatively low in maintenance. Here at Kew, if, if a plant is particularly small, we might give it a tree circle, top it up with some of our on-site made woody mulch, which consists of bark mixed with a percentage of manure from the royal stables. Another part of maintaining magnolias is cutting away the suckers. Suckers are these shoots which form at the base of a magnolia plant, usually on a yearly basis. Here are some I found earlier. So they come up as little branches growing at the base of the main trunk. And to keep the plant tidy, you'll cut them away, leaving just the main stem of the tree. And on these stems, you can see the characteristic furry buds of the genus Magnolia. Aside from the magnificent flowers and the ornamental use of magnolias, they can also be eaten. So there was a uh, unwritten up study at Kew um, by, by some, some of the members of our ethnobotany team. And what they did is they analysed, uh, well, analysed, tried, tasted. Anyway, what this study found was that those petals with dark pink colours are very spicy and those with lighter colours, so a, a bit more of a white, are more lemony in taste. And supposedly the, the ideal, the ideal um, magnolia petal colour to consume is one which has a dark pink on the outside and then a white on the inside. So something like this, Magnolia cross silangiana is very edible. There are particular species which can be eaten and which ones, particular ones which can't. And it's really important to check that the ones you've got are edible before you eat them. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey on Magnolias and have a lovely day. Thanks for watching this episode of Dig Deeper. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. If you'd like to learn more about the work that Q does, visit our website for more information.